G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second channel. My name's Isaac Butterfield. This is Little Dixon. Hello! Hello. And uh, <laughs> after the last video we made that was a great success, people really, really enjoyed it, we thought we'd tackle another strange case. Now the last video we made was all about the death of Princess Diana. Go and see that video if you haven't already. But this one is about a man who washed up on the shores of Australia very, very dead and no one ever found out who he was. To make it even stranger, his pockets were full of more mysterious items. Little Dixon, take it away. Da -da -da. The Tarman Shud case, also known as the mystery of the Summerton Man, is an unsolved case that deserves far more attention than it receives. To understand the perplexity of this case, we need to start from the beginning. The mystery man's body was found in 1948 laying on the sand at Summerton Park Beach in South Australia. It is definitely worth noting that in this man's trouser pocket, police retrieved a scrap bit of paper that read the Persian phrase, Taman Shud, which means, is over or finished. I like how you read, uh, Taman Shud then. Can you repeat that for the... Taman Shud. <laughs> now that's just racist. <laughs> I tried me best. The man was wearing a brown shirt, clean shaven, and had a scrap bit of paper. The scrap bit of paper was torn from a 12th century poet's book, Omar Khayyam. By the way, the pocket that the paper was found in was a secret sewn in pocket. That's so dodgy. So weird. So he's washed up on a beach. Mm -hmm. He's got a pocket that is... So what what constitutes a sewn in pocket? Because I remember when I got my suit for the year 10 formal. Here the we pockets go. That <laughs> what? <laughs> There was a secret bit of paper from Lowe's, and it read oh. at Lowe's. No, um, it had uh, a little, like a little oh. bit of a th thing that you know. If you bought a suit, you know what I'm talking about, and you have put to put your calculator in it. No, you have to break <laughs> it before you put your hands in, sort of thing. So, this was a pocket inside of his trousers that was sewn in. That's mm -hmm. super dodgy. Super strange. But it's weird. Like, why would you possibly, for what reason, other than something sus, would you have a sewn-in pocket? Find out. Ooh. Following a public appeal by the police, the book from which the page had been torn was located. How did they find the book that the page was actually torn out of? Many months after the man had washed up on the shore in the cop shop, someone threw that book, the very book, might not have been the same book, and had that little bit of paper ripped out and someone threw it through the window of a police station. Well, of course, but it was the same book if it had the bit of paper ripped out of it. Or someone was trying to be... A Coolio and ah. just ripped it out of one and was like, yeah. So they found the so either they found the book mm -hmm. that the actual page was ripped out of. I like out to of. think it is the book. Well, it makes sense because when they found the book, the contents of the book included local telephone numbers, an unidentified number, and text that has not yet been deciphered by police in a satisfactory way. This case has intense speculation and theories regarding who the man was. What was he doing when he died? Was he alone? And most terrifyingly and interestingly, was he a spy? In recent years, additional evidence has emerged, including an old identification card that read H.C. Reynolds. On the 29th of May 2021, after a series of requests, the man's body was finally exhumed for analysis. The police stated that the man's remains were in a reasonable condition and were optimistic about the prospect of DNA recovery. For more than 70 years, people have speculated who was this man and how did he die? So he had an identification card on him and he was at H... H... what was it? H.C. Reynolds, I H.C. Reynolds. So there's a card on him that says yep. H.C. Reynolds. So are they saying that that's his name? Well, that's the speculation that that was his name. That's what they think. Or his cover, his alias. Something like that. That's a very good point. Let's have a quick look at how the body was discovered. At 7pm, November 30th, 1948, John Bain Lyons and his wife. How sexist that they don't know his wife's name. It's somewhere. Disgusting. It'll we're, be somewhere. We're taking an evening stroll on Summerton Beach, a small seaside resort just outside of Adelaide, Australia. The couple were enjoying the brisk ocean air and each other's company. Little did they know what they were about to walk past. Motionless, slumped against some rocks, lay a man. He was about 60 or so feet from where the couple were walking. 
The man had his leg outstretched and the opposite leg bent as though he was relaxed. Because that's how I relax. I wrote that bit. I, I liked it, is, it. It did. It looked like he was sort of just chilling. Yeah, just chilling out. No, I know. I'm just being a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, the couple believed that the man was just drunk and struggling to light his cigarette. That's that's how I imagine people would look at a dead person in the street. Oh, look, he's pissed. Well, he's though, drunk again. That's I, w- I know when you were writing this, I sort of said to you when you s- said that bit, that's probably what we would... That's Absolutely. how we would react. Not our problem. Sorry, yeah. Dal. Sorry, big fella. Sorry, you're dead. Uh, bye. Bye. <laughs> they continue their stroll without giving it another thought. Half an hour later, another couple walking along the beach saw a man in a similar position. This time, they both noticed that the well-dressed man was not moving at all. The couple joked that the man was dead to the world and drunk. John Lyons, the same man who had seen the body during an earlier evening stroll, and his wife returned to the beach for a refreshing swim. This was at 6.30am the next morning. He had met a mate shortly after his swim, and they noticed a few people on horseback near the sea wall. And there it was, the man's body, still there, motionless. Lyons remembered seeing the same man the night before, and he immediately called police. The details of the man's body are as follows. He was 5 foot 11. He had grey eyes. He had mousy ginger coloured hair, greying on the sides and receding. Poor guy. Fucking what? (laughs) Poor guy! (laughs) Nothing wrong with the receding hairline. Go us. Yours is lovely. Thank you. He was estimated to be between 40 to 50 years old. He was uncircumcised. That's an interesting piece of information in there, Claire. Were you a part of the exhumation of this body? God, no. Well, they can take his life, but they'll never take his foreskin. He weighed between 75 and 80 kilos. He was missing 18 teeth, including his two lateral incisors, which were most likely never grown due to genetic defect. Fucking how many teeth was he missing? 18. 18 teeth? But, but, get this. Go on. So... I was doing some more research about it last night and apparently there were some old deers and I think they're not with us anymore. That stole his teeth. No. (laughs) That said back in those days it was quite common for people to be missing over 10 teeth. So whether or not that's actually that interesting to us it is, but back then maybe not. I guess they're not going to the dentist, they're not brushing their teeth as much, yada, yada, yada. Um, Still creepy. Very creepy. His hands were clean along with his feet callous free indicating that he didn't do manual labor the man also seemed to have oddly pointed toes which some have speculated online that he did ballet oh mm. so maybe he is russian the russian ballet spot hang on let not me, cracker let me do some googling here all right if you look up tum and should feet there'll be some things that pop up okay but it's also hard to tell if they're his feet or if they're just what people think his feet looked like. Ah. Hot, right? Yeah, so he does sort of have... Um, mm. It's saying he's got dystonia of the toes. Right. Which apparently ballet dancers get. Yeah. Pointed in. Or what about this? Pointed toes. Oh, can't spell. Conspiracy theory. Good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, Kurt Cobain. All right. Kim Kardashian's six-toe conspiracy theory resurfaces after a controversial birthday party. That is an article we're not going to read. We're not reading about Kim Kardashian. I'd rather die. In the initial investigation, the coroner's report listed the man's death as heart failure, possibly caused by poisoning. Wow. Okay. It is also worth mentioning the rather unusual belongings of the man that were found in his briefcase. The briefcase that is assumed to belong to the man. So the briefcase allegedly was found after the man had been brought to police and they were investigating it further. The briefcase was found at a train station nearby. So it's allegedly his. The items that were found are as follows. An unused train ticket from Adelaide to Henley Beach. A bus ticket from Adelaide to Glenleg. Glenleg? 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 Sounds nice. A buzzy. <laughs> a pack of juicy fruit chewing gum. Yum. Good taste for Ooh, a dead yes. guy. 
All that chewing with no teeth would have been tough. <laughs> Bryant Bay matches, an aluminium comb, and finally a pack of rather distinguished and expensive cigarettes called Army Club. Also, more items of clothing were inside. As seen in the pictures of the man, he was dressed rather snappy for the beach. His suit and trousers were oddly missing their labels, also rather strange for the time. The man had no hat on him or in his briefcase. I think it's pretty fair to say that this isn't just an open and shut case. We're finding mm. briefcases at train stations. He's got all his clothing, uh, the, all the, the tags are taken off. Yep. His teeth are missing. His feet are pointy, which is probably going to break the case. He's got, <laughs> he's got all weird shit. He's got a sewn-in pocket with a weird mm -hmm. bit of fucking writing in it that's torn out of mm -hmm. some poet's fucking book. It's creepy. It's weird. So why is this such a mystery? Why, what are the theories? What have police deduced or what have the, uh, the internet people deduced? One of the more believed theories about this case is that the Somerton man was a Russian spy on a mission. Many experts and locals have speculated that this theory is true. The Soviets were yet to get their hands on an atomic bomb and back in 1948 the Americans and the British were producing uranium at the Port Piri lead smelter in secret. Details show five ships left Port Piri during the time that the man's body was discovered. The theory is that he may have travelled to Adelaide on one of the ships where ultimately he met with foul play. The Australian Navy has admitted that Russian submarines were interested in the Spencer Gulf during this time. Nobody has ever come forward claiming they know the Somerton man. However, one of the numbers we mentioned earlier found in his belongings belonged to a nurse called Jo Thompson. She lived nearby and to this day denied knowing the man. Very interesting. So, yeah, she, um, and we probably can't get her on for comment. She's probably pretty dead uh, yeah. by now. So they were making um, uranium in Australia. That's crazy. For the um, nuclear weapons that the Americans were using, or that they had in their arsenal. So they've sent out a Russian spy to see what's going on because they've caught wind of it. Is there any other theories? I'm going to have a goog. Because it sort of makes sense that, okay, this... A, sorry, sorry, go on. There's also a few internet sleuths that have... Uh, concocted a bit of a theory that it's a, a a love story gone bad that he's you know gone there to chase a sweetheart that doesn't want him anymore and that he's just a bit of a weird dude um didn't do much for me i like the spy theory personally yeah i mean why would you want like there's one website here that says as for the spy theory um there's not one ounce of actual historical substance to the whole theory but if he was a spy there wouldn't be much right nope. he's like, a good spy He's a yeah, exactly. Yep. Let's go to Wikipedia. The photos of the men are quite chilling as well. They are creepy, aren't they? Yeah. So the discovery of the suitcase. Staff at Adelaide train station discovered a brown suitcase with its label removed, which had been checked into the uh, station cloakroom at 11 a.m. on the 30th of November 1948. It's believed that the suitcase was owned by the men uh, on the beach. In the case was a red checked dressing gown, a size 7 uh, slippers, uh, four pairs of underpants, so the clothes we were talking about earlier. Also in the suitcase was a thread card for a Barber brand orange. But it doesn't say why they thought it was his. They just said, yeah, it's... That's his. That's his suitcase. <laughs> uh, no, th there's nothing there that says that he that was his suitcase. Good. I feel better. Yeah, so well, I couldn't find anything either. That's why I just said it, they think it was his suitcase. They're basically deducing that it is his suitcase because it was the only one there. Let's just call it his. Makes sense. According to Wikipedia, it was definitely his suitcase. Not a de There's no I just doubt. I winked at the camera. Don't wink at the camera. Sorry. The no. people out there will think you're... No, you can wink at the camera. So the body was exhumed this year. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's mm -hmm. crazy. They just dug it out in the middle of the night. Some people are thinking he's a rejected lover. Some people are thinking he's a, um, a spy. I mean, what else could he be? I mean, maybe he was just a... Just some poor dude that died. Mm. Well, he was down at the beach. He was dressed well, poisoned. Mm -hmm. Maybe he just killed himself. Yeah, I think I think that's what maybe people meant with the love story. Maybe that you never know. Gotcha. And he's just gone, no, nah, I can't deal with strange. this anymore. When I was researching this, I found it kind of frustrating because I found lots of sort of almost theories that but they were just people's opinions so they're not really a conspiracy theory about it it's more just such a sad sick mystery really like it's pretty i know i said chilling before but i found it quite chilling some people are saying that this dude 
that he was, you know, he had um, traces of Native American ancestry and chromosomes linked to relatives of Thomas Jefferson. Whoever this dude was, I mean, obviously we all have links to, you know, people in the past, but whoever this dude was, I'd love to be able to, for someone to be able to crack this case. I mean, mm. we're not going to crack it, but I'd love for someone to be, able, uh, to be able to crack this case. Well, thanks for bringing us that one little diggy. I was really in, uh, quite intrigued when you started looking into that because I've heard about it before. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure we were going to get to, and obviously no one's sort of, um, no one has broken the case. I mean, no. they haven't broken William Tyrrell's case, so they're not going to no. break fucking this one. Let us know in the comment section what you would like to see next, mm -hmm. but what are your ideas for what we should do next in this series? Mm -hmm. I had a few ideas. I was actually thinking possibly, I don't know what you guys think, but I would find it interesting doing some missing persons cases, maybe some Australian ones. Okay. Um, looking at some that are really old, maybe some newer ones, um, things that don't have that much information, but I think it might be nice to sort of bring them to light a little bit and maybe even delve into some like ones that are more well-known, like your Maddie McCann. Um, yeah, there are a lot of... Really lot, famous, like, you know, famous uh, missing person cases yeah. or true crime cases. So let us know in the comment section what you would like to see. Let us mm. know if you enjoyed this one. Positive vibes, little dicky. Pos uh, you know, give me whatever vibes you want. But send me some. You'd be nice to him. Vibe me up, babe. Vibe me up. Get vibing. Get Ladies vibing. Get <laughs> no. Fuck. No, no vibes. No. Ladies and gentlemen, be a good motherfucker. Peace in the Middle East, me dick stings. Toodle au revoir. Bye bye. Bye.